So I'm here with my friend John Mark Homer, and he is coming back to Vertical Con second year in a row. So I don't have a test, but he for sure we passed his test, I guess, um, with coffee or something else. We had a great time together in Chicago last New Year's. Do you have a memory or something from that time that sticks out to you? Yeah, the I mean, I had such a great time last year, but the main one was just times of worship. Like that shocked me. You know, walking into that room it was my first time at Vertical Con. Just the amount of Energy is too vague of a word, but the sense of like authentic passion, love, expression of worship to God, hundreds of people crammed in that beautiful old building, singing and singing louder than any group I've been a part of in years, was that was by far my favorite thing. I mean, after you, of course, but. That really pumps me up um, to hear, man, that fires me up. Um, so since last year, you released this new book, God Has a Name. And uh, I can say yeah. that I read it. I can say that I read it cover to cover. Um, I wouldn't be That's above. A... I wouldn't be above being disingenuous if I needed to be. But I can say with complete truth that I did. It's um man. It's 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 got a really great thing to it for people who haven't caught up with it yet. Um, we're giving away some copies. I think as part of when we promo this. Just what's the elevator pitch on that book? That um, the message that God gave to you from it. Yeah, short version is what you think about God is the most important thing about you because what comes into your mind when you say the word God or think of God and who he is and who he isn't will more than anything shape the person that you do or do not become. We become like our mental picture of God. So if our mental picture is based on Jesus of Nazareth and the writings of the scriptures, then you're pointed in the right direction. If it's based more on pop culture, bias, family of origin, opinion, this fad, that, then you might end up pointed in the wrong direction and end up becoming somebody that you don't want to become and missing out on, above all, re, a, like a really life-giving relationship with this God. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Um, one of the things that I really resonated with me as I began to kind of know of you and follow your ministry was just the way that you um, really rebel against the consumeristic, narcissistic, selfie generation, constantly on the go, just some of, so much of that stuff. What are some ways that you create space in your own life to meet with God and get away from all that other junk that everybody likes to talk about getting away from the junk, but so many of us are in this fight to kind of create the space. Yeah. I mean, for me, basically the last three, four years of my life, I've had three goals. Goal one has been to slow down, like literally to slow down the pace of my life, then to simplify, because in order to slow down, you have to simplify, simplify my life around the spiritual disciplines or the practices of Jesus. Things like silence, solitude, prayer, fasting, Sabbath has become one of the most life-giving days of my week. And then third, just to make what Jesus called abiding, what another writer called the practice of the presence of God, just living with God moment to moment, to make that my top goal in life. Lots of other goals in life, but that's like to make that the number one driving motivation. So those three goals, slow down, simplify around the spiritual disciplines, and make abiding the center point of my life. That's basically been my life journey for the last three, four, five years. Um, so I'm thinking about people are going to be watching this, you know, somewhere they're uh, should be paying attention in class or they're in between this thing or that thing. And they're in this 18 to 20s age group and they're on the fence about whether or not they're going to put down the money, make the space, take the effort to get to Vertical Con. Just give uh, somebody out there some encouragement why this would be a good use and investment of their time in between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, I mean, these are some of the most important new years of your life because you're laying a foundation that the rest of the house that is your life is built upon. And that's Jesus' metaphor, not mine, about building the house of your life on practicing his teachings. And so, man, you get out of your the house that is your life and your relationship to God the Father in it, the time and effort and energy that you put in. And so the more that you put in, if that's a weekend conference away, if that's every morning you get up and pray and read the scriptures before you go about your day and turn on your phone, wh whatever it is, you get out what you put in. And so I just can't think of a better way to start off your new year than to carve out time to recenter your mind and body around Jesus and to move forward and lay a foundation for apprenticeship to Jesus for the rest of your life with this weekend.